and this is my blood, the blood of the covenant which is to be poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee with him, and Sabbath came over him, and great distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful to the point of death. Wait here and keep away from me. And going on a little further, he fell on his face and prayed. My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. <coughs> Nevertheless, let it be as you, not I. The high priest then stood up before the whole assembly and put this question to Jesus. Have you no answer to that? What is the evidence that these men are bringing against you? But he was silent and made no answer at all. The high priest <coughs> put a second question to him. Are you the Christ? He said, the son of the blessed one? I am. Said Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews? Are you the king of the Jews? Are you the king of the Jews? Do you ask this of your own accord? Do you ask this of your own accord? Do you ask this of your own accord? <coughs> what have you done? What have you done? What have you done? <coughs> My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. My kingdom is not of this world. They then took charge of Jesus and carrying his own cross, he went out of the city to the place of the skull. Or as it was called in Hebrew, Golgotha. They led him out to crucify him. They enlisted a passerby. Simon of Cyrene, father of Alexander and Rufus, who was coming in from the country to carry his cross.
After this, Joseph of Arimathea, who was the disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because he was afraid of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him remove the body of Jesus. Pilate gave permission, so they came and took him away. Nicodemus came as well, the same one who had first come to Jesus at night time, and he brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, following the Jewish burial custom. At the place where he had been crucified, there was a garden, and in this garden, a new tomb in which no one had yet been buried. Since it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was near at hand, they laid Jesus there. <coughs> they had taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they had laid him. Peter then came out with the other side, and they went towards the tomb. <coughs> They both ran, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first, stopping and stooping to look in. <coughs> he saw the linen cloth lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloth lying, and the napkin which had been placed on his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. <coughs> the disciples went back to their homes. But Mary stood, weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels of white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one of the head and one of the head. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. Saying this, she turned and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom do you seek? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you carry him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, she turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbi, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and said to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he 